everyone, this is Mike Check 95 These movies are basically movies that I had reviewed over the year of 2022. There's a couple of new ones that we saw in theaters, but there's going to be a lot of older ones that we happen to see as well. And out of the four top ten movie lists that I'm going to start with, it's going to be the top ten bad movies of 2022 that I have reviewed. And these are films that I thought were a complete waste of time and also were completely bad and I don't recommend and don't want to watch ever again pretty much. So starting off our list at number 10 is Jurassic Park 3. This is a very controversial pick for a couple of my friends because my go my girlfriend is one of them. Uh, that she uh, actually loves Jurassic Park 3 along with Krieger Margin as well and the reason why I put uh, Jurassic Park 3 in number 10 is it's just there's a lot of other movies on this list at least nine more that I thought were a lot worse than Jurassic Park 3 surprisingly but it's just for Jurassic Park 3 it didn't feel special it didn't really feel like anything really fantastic happened like there was a lot of good ideas in the movie it's just the script that they were given was completely completely horrible a lot of it may have to do with the fact that there's some uh, backstage news when it comes to the filming of it that they were almost done filming with the movie and then within a week before the, the filming deadline was th there uh, the production crew of the writing came back with the new script handed to them and said here's the new script we want you to use this instead have it done by the end of the week so that could be a strong reason why Jurassic Park 3 didn't really do that well because of the complete rewrite they had to do last minute. Plus, it's just, it's, I've seen this film at least three or four times. It's so hard to get through. I mean, the only cool thing about it is the Spinosaurus. It's the only, that's the only cool thing about it. And the only mysterious element about it is that, that, that dinosaur, the Spinosaurus, like, why is it there? What create? What was the process of its creation? It's there. That's really it. Now, number nine was kind of a surprising pick for me because I actually really do enjoy this movie for the for the most part. It's just watching it a second time was a little rough when it comes to it, and also comparing it to the scores that I have at the very end of the year for when it comes to. Ugh. when it comes to all the movies that I had watched last year. Number nine goes to I, Frankenstein. It's a film that I thought that had a lot of potential. It actually was pretty uh, decent. It's just the runtime was really bad. It felt like a lot of the story arcs and the storyline was just cramped together really horribly with basically no room to breathe. It's based off of an online comic book if I remember correctly, and it had plans of a potential crossover with the Underworld series. And we know what happened there, because the Rotten Tomato scores for that were completely atrocious. But we don't go off of Rotten Tomato scores, we go off the mic check scores on this channel. I, Frankenstein, had potential. It had something to go with it. It's just that potential was potentially wasted. And I feel like if I watch it again, I am probably am not going to like it at all, so... Sorry. Sorry, Eckhart. Sorry about that. Uh, number eight goes to a Carrie Career Series uh, movie, Once Bitten. We've been doing the Carrie Career Series for a very long time, and we haven't really gotten that far into it. I apologize for that. But Once Bitten was one of the very first uh, films that Jim Carrey was actually in that he's the main protagonist. And the problem that I had with Once Bitten is just for the sole fact that it has a lot of the same reoccurring themes as the first two films that uh, Jim Carrey was a part of. A lot of over the top main plot point being like sexual drive and whatnot. Like the 80s is probably also kind of part of the issue too. And like seeing Jim Carrey play a vampire was probably the most interesting part but it it just seemed a little over the top 
and it just wasn't really that good of a comedy movie when it comes to it. Number seven goes to a film that I kind of wished ended up being a lot further down on this list was Terminator Genesis, the one Terminator film that I have came to realize that I absolutely loathe, hate, and despise. Terminator Genesis has a lot of problems with unanswered questions, a lot of sci-fi bullshit that didn't make any fucking sense, a lot of logical bullshit that didn't make any fucking sense, the fact that it pretty much resets the timeline again, even though time travel is pretty much an easy plot point to use for your main story and make se multiple sequels in different timelines. Genesis is kind of like the red-headed laughingstock stepchild of the family that nobody really likes. And it's, it's there and it exists. That's all you need to know. This is one that I would say that you can probably skip watching when you having your Terminator uh, marathon. You don't really need to see it. It's, it's just not good. Number six goes to Alien Resurrection. We finished our Alien series at the beginning of this year. We started it at the end of December. We finished it in January. Alien Resurrection is probably the hardest film to get through in the Alien series for me. It's just, again, it has the same issues as, pretty much has the same problems as three of the films that I've already listed. It's over the top, the comedy is not great at all, the story's fucking atrocious, the acting, well, they acted the part that they were given because a script asked for it, but it wasn't good. And just a lot of, just bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Per se, it wasn't really boring is probably not the right way to put it. It was just outright difficult to watch. And as much as I enjoy having the entire entire Alien series, I would probably be happy going without seeing it ever again. Number five in the dead center of this top ten list. And this is also this kind of the start where the movies are actually really fucking bad. These next five films, I will absolutely do everything in my power to avoid. Number five goes to The Predator 2018. Reshoot Hell. This film is probably one of the biggest disgraces when it comes to the Predator series. We're lucky to have Prey that came out earlier this year, which we'll be talking about that film in another top ten list. But The Predator 2018 really left a bad mark on the Predator series for what it was. Story was bad, script got rewritten probably several times, the reshoots were fucking horrible, the CGI for the Super Predator looked absolutely sh fucking shit. Um, just for me, it really felt like the second half of the film shouldn't really exist in the movie because I feel like that they added in this Super Predator in the reshoots because it's something new. And uh, global warming is a plot line to this fucking movie. Oh man. Um, yeah, a couple kills were actually pretty decent. There's one kill that the predator does that I actually like a lot. Other than that, it's it's atrocious. When you when you and your friend go see this film in theaters like a week after it came out, and there's literally nobody but you and your friend you know that there's going to be something horribly going wrong. Number four is a film that I'm probably going to just, just get done and over with because I don't want to talk about it anymore than I have to. Number four goes to Apollo 18. It's fucking horrible. Moving on. Number three. Now we're in the top three of the bad films that I reviewed this year. Number three goes to All in Good Taste. Uh, it has the same issues as Once Bitten, but Once Bitten is a little bit more bearable to get through. This film takes all the elements of the first Jim Carrey film that are not entertaining, that are very uncomfortable, that is just flat out awful, and crank it up to 11. Just the theme, the sexual themes in this film was just too much. It just made the complete experience unbearable and uncomfortable and it's the film the, the film experience for me and Krieger itself 
It's quite funny because there was somebody that had walked into the house because Krieger forgot to lock the fucking door and thought that this was going to be a new house he moved into. And at the time, we thought, hey, this is probably one of the guys are moving into the new house. He's probably just come by and seeing it. He was very confused because we were sitting on the couch watching this very strongly sexual themed movie. And then he realizes that he had went to the wrong house. So that individual probably has a very, very strong mental image of us for the rest of his life. So that's the only good part when it came out of this movie, is that experience. Number two is The Fanatic. This is a film that I begged to watch for two years. No, four years. And this is a film where I decided to try to have a few drinks while watching it to try to increase the in, uh, enjoyable experience. The movie was so unbearable to watch that I had to stop drinking because I just did not want to watch it anymore. And this is a, this is a Limp Bizkit movie. And this is also the film that killed John Travolta's career again. And number one goes to the Sex and Violence Family Hour. All in Good Taste takes everything from this film and cranks it up to 11 and makes it uncomfortable. This film, it, it's basically a badly written hour long SNL skit done in the 80s. All of the jokes are extremely outdated. All of the themes are extremely outdated. Nothing was absolutely funny in this at all. It was just unbearable. It was uncomfortable. It was agonizing to get through. And this was the very first film that Jim Carrey was in, or film. This is definitely a film where you would go behind the black curtain in Blockbuster to find and rent. So that's my top 10 bad movies that I reviewed in 2022. The next time you shall see me, I'll be talking about films that I feel like that didn't really hit the mark that could have done it if it had a bit more like elbow grease or a bit more um, umph put into it but it still just didn't really hit it but until then this is Mike Check 95 signing up